Hey everyone, it's Caleb. Welcome. In this episode, we're going to talk about using icons and emojis inside of websites, which, in my opinion, can increase the visual experience of the website when appropriate. A lot of people consider them to be unprofessional, but I think that if used right, they can actually make your overall website experience better. And I think that has a lot to do with the context as well as how many you use. You definitely don't want to overdo it. But there are a few things you can do without having to install any kind of dependencies or other projects. You can just start using different icons in your website. And that's what we're going to show you here. The first thing you should know is that most editors are going to support emojis. So you can say command control space on Mac and that's going to open the emoji list. Let me know what your most frequently used emojis are. And later on, I'll talk about some additional emoji support inside of Visual Studio Code. But for now, let's talk about websites. So when you're working on a website, and here you are in codepen.io, which gives you HTML, CSS, and JavaScript, you can use different icons inside of HTML. Two different websites you can use to find different icons are unicodetable.com and topdle.com. So if you find some icon that you like, you can copy and you can just paste it. However, if there's a certain circumstance where copying and pasting will not work, you can actually use these different codes down here. So the Unicode encoding has support for these different icons. So if you wanted to do it inside of HTML, you could use this code instead. So it would look something like this, where let's say we have an H1, and inside of here, you can paste that code and it should work the same way where you can now see that rocket down here. So either one of those should work. And a similar thing over here with this warning icon, we'll take that HTML code and we'll paste that in there as well. So now you can see we have two icons down here. And then you could just do some styling if you want to change the appearance of a certain icon. So let's go ahead and say this is with the ID equal to emoji. And inside of CSS, we'll just say emoji color is orange. And that'll change the color of that icon. Now, an important thing with icons is you might want to say what they're being used for. So that can be done with a hover effect, which of course you can do some fancy CSS or JavaScript stuff. But the easiest way to do this is to actually just say title and assign it some value. So we'll just say something bad here. And now on hover, you should be able to see the pop-up saying something bad. So that gives some context to this icon instead of just having some random icon. There's also a lot you can do for screen reading and other accessibility, which you can do some additional research if you're interested. But this is the basics to get the icon and to have a little pop-up saying something. Now, when you look at these different icons, you can see they have this Unicode value and this U plus says, hey, this is Unicode. And then there's some value here. Well, there's a lot of different icons and characters that are supported inside of Unicode, and this is just an encoded number, so you could actually increment this value and see what that value is. So, to show you what I mean, if instead of A0, you had A1, you can see that would be the voltage icon. And as you increment, you continue to get more and more icons. Similar thing in HTML, we could go in here and change this 8 to a 9 to see what else is available. And there's the voltage icon. So if you wanted, you could make a loop in JavaScript or something to iterate through and increment this number, which is one of the reasons why you might want to use the Unicode rather than actually pasting in the emoji. Because when you paste in an emoji here, you can't do as much programmatic stuff with it. So let's show some examples of working with these different icons inside of CSS and JavaScript. So inside of CSS, you can use the content attribute. So an example of this is if we grab the emoji ID and we'll say before, and inside of this, we can say content and assign some value here. So this will go before whatever we have down here. So an example would be like lightning, but you can also do icons and emojis. So if we copy this here, we could paste that and that'll show up just fine. Or alternatively, you can use the CSS Unicode, which looks like this. So a little bit of a different format. Instead of having U+, we're just going to have this backslash. So let's go ahead and try that out. Instead of pasting that rocket there, we'll just put backslash one F680, and you can see it works the same way. So that's how you can do it inside of CSS. JavaScript is also going to look a little bit different. So let's go ahead and grab a reference to this element here. So we'll say document, dot get element by ID and inside here we will pass in emoji which is the ID of this h1 over here 
and we can use the inner HTML attribute. Let me just zoom in a little bit so it fits a little nicer in there. And here we can use the same code, F680, for example, but we're going to prefix it with 0x instead. So 0x F680. Now, when we do this, immediately we're just going to get the value down here, which isn't exactly what we wanted. So we actually need to convert this by saying string dot from code point. Pass in that value. And let's go ahead and increment this just to get a new icon to see what it is. Just have a little typo there. So from code point. And you can see it's this box, which usually means an unsupported icon. All right, there we go. That puts a smiley face in place of whatever is already in the HTML here. And there we show how to do it in HTML, CSS, and JavaScript. Now inside of Visual Studio Code, there's a good extension you can use to help with emojis, where you can just go ahead and put a colon, scroll through here, and choose the emoji you want. And if you start typing, it'll give you some suggestions that are very similar to what you're typing. This is pretty handy, and I think a little bit of a better experience than using the built-in one here, but this will work as well. So to get this, what we need to do is we need to go to the extensions, and it's called Emoji Sense by Matt, however that last name is pronounced. When this is installed, it should work for the default file you have open. However, if you're going to be working in other languages, it might not work by default. So if you want to set it up so that it works in different languages, you know, if you're writing HTML for a website, for example, you can go into the extension settings. And then for the languages, you just hit edit in settings.json. And you can see I added this whole list of supported languages. So if you want, you can just add the ones you're working on, just copying this code I have here. And this entire list can be found in this GitHub issue to add it in all languages. So you can copy and paste this exact code. And when you do that, you'll probably want to add a comma after the end here so that you can continue on with the rest of your settings. So you can see down here, add that comma, and then I put the rest of my Visual Studio Code settings. So that will allow it to work inside of HTML files and all these other languages as well. Now, the last thing I wanted to mention is that these emojis are platform specific. So what looks like a rocket for one person may actually look a little bit different for someone else. Now, in general, they still all look like rockets. However, you can see these give completely different experiences depending on which platform you're on. So if it's the case that you're using an emoji and you want it to be exactly the same across all these different platforms, what you need to do is you actually will need to use a small image or an icon library that can be consistent across all platforms. So a quick example is you go to this and copy image address, and then inside of HTML, say image source, and you probably want to have this local, but for now, I'll just use this URL, and you can see we get that exact icon here, and then you can just style it with CSS to get exactly the size that you want. That's all I have on this video on icons and emojis, so hopefully that was a good introduction. If you found this interesting and you'd be interested in me covering some of the different icon libraries out there, then definitely drop a comment on which one you'd like to see. And with that, thank you for watching, and be sure to subscribe. I'll see you in the next video. Peace out.